A lot of you have asked to see the shop that I used to create all these research and development prototypes. So there's too much to show in one short video. So let's start with the bridge port. This is the workhorse of this shop and it's used for all of the cleanup type stuff that you would use to finish a prototype that in some cases were not fully thought through or in some cases not ready for production, obviously. So I'm coming to you from this really dirty bridge port. Let's take a look at it. Got to add one more thing. Sometimes you're just doing like a three piece or four piece prototype and there's an operation that you just don't want to set up on the CNC machine because it'd be a super pain and you don't want to charge a customer more money for that. And you could just knock it out. Like in this case, we're just adding an NPT hole to a section of a pump. That's all. So it just involves like two drilling operations, tapping. You can essentially eyeball this port to get it down to the input to this pump. And that's what I'm doing here. When I say eyeballing, I mean eyeballing with repeatability because we have a stop right here and we have a digital readout right here. What the digital readout does is it reads these glass scales that are on the axes of the machine. And then when you turn the handle to move the table and you see the table moving, you get a digital value that moves. And then what you can do is if I wanna go right back to where I was at, I can move it back to exactly zero again. Let's go through all the important parts of the machine now. This is the light. This is the quill that goes up or down. Mine's a little bit stuck. This is a stop on the quill so that you can go down to the same position every time. This is a vise. It's a Kurt style six inch vise, a machinist vise. A little handle comes off, which is kind of cool because you don't want it to hit this, which is your Y axis of the table. This is your knee. This is your knee adjustment. This also comes off and you can turn this around, which is pretty cool. There's locks, which I don't really use. You can use those. This is your X axis. There's a knob on each side and there's what's called a vernier on here. This is old school. I don't use this because I have my digital readout, but you could use a vernier to establish zero and repeatability if you buy an old machine and don't want to invest in the digital readout. This is your motor and there are belts that can be adjusted for speed for your spindle. So you can change your spindle speed. There's a little chart on here for what the speeds are. Let's talk about price for those of you who are gonna to try to buy used Bridgeport. I personally don't wanna pay more than like 1200 to $1,500 for a machine like this because I'm just using it as an overgrown drill press. If you're on a farm, a homestead, something like that, and you just want something to machine steel with, you can probably pay $750 for a machine like this. You find it used and it'll treat you very well. It's way better than a drill press and you can actually machine steel with it. Now, if those ways are sagging, things like that, you might be having trouble holding like a thousandth or two, but think about how accurate that is. You could have saggy old blown out ways and you're still holding a couple thousandths of an inch if you set up right. So uh, just think about what you're paying for. And I would say, don't overlook those really beat up looking old bridge ports. They'll treat you very well. Thanks so much for watching. Adios.